We're going to turn our attention now to someone right here in our own backyard who graced the cover of Sports Illustrated twice, and he lives in the city of Scottsdale. Remember Tony Mandrich? Tony Mandrich, the second overall pick in 1989 in the draft, only behind Troy Aikman and ahead of Barry Sanders, had a career that was supposed to take him way down the line towards the Hall of Fame, but instead he ended up being on the cover of SI a second time as the NFL's incredible bust. Mandrich now has turned his attentions away from football, closing in on the age of 50. I had him in studio recently. He has a terrific career now in front of him in the world of photography and composites. When I spoke with him, he was repentant, remorseful, and humbled. This was earlier. I, I think that, you know, being rem remorseful and, and saying, hey, look, I was wrong, and I was an idiot for the stuff I did, and, but there's no excuse. I don't care about, I don't care if it was the alcohol talking. I still take accountability. It doesn't matter. I did it and I screwed up and I take accountability. And, you know, in the meantime, you try to make things right. And, um, and I think it, now it's kind of like, okay, well, how have you lived since you've been sober? right? Since, you know, 1995. So that really starts to define who you are with character, with integrity, with, you know, loyalty, all these things. And I've, every day I've tried to live how I would, you know, want to be an example for people. And now there are things that are extremely high on my list. Loyalty is very high on my list mm -hmm. with people and, and stuff like that. So, you know, I have thousands of acquaintances, very, very few friends mm. and even fewer close friends. Tough to let them in because you were, you were ridiculed. The SI cover, as you were talking about, that was like, that had to damage you. Yeah, it did. It, yeah. I mean, it, it was, it was, it was. Uh, at the time, it was uh, hurtful. Um, you know, I don't care, you know, who, who you, you are. are. I don't care who you are. It, it, the stuff hurts when you read it, right? And then it's national, and then, um, and then you're in the midst of your addiction. You know, which uh, the self-loathing and, and, you know, you're a piece of crap in your head. You're talking in your head and, and, and what of a loser you are and all this. So it's uh, it, it was it was tough. But then, you know, once things cleared up and cleaned up um, and I could look back at the whole situation, it was like, yeah, you know what? They were right. The the best years of my life are ahead of me. Hmm. Um the things, my goals that I have and the things I intend to accomplish are, in my opinion, going to be more difficult and greater than the things I've accomplished. Like what? Uh, things to do with photography and creativity. Um, you know, eventually there's, you know, I, I shouldn't say this. There's a, there's a lot. We're in a different generation now of, of you know, early 20s people. Millennials. That, that don't know about my career. Mm-hmm. So they only know me as the photographer guy, the, the one that shoots the composites that they love and stuff. And it's funny because I've, there's people I've known for two, three years. And, you know, I don't go around telling people I played football. It's just some people will be like, oh, you know, you're a big guy for a photographer. And I'm like, yeah, you know, I just I like to work out. And somebody will tell them, do you know that he played pro football? And do you know he was on the cover of Sports Illustrated and, and all this stuff? So then the next time they see me, they're like, why didn't you tell me all this? And yeah. I'm like, well, you don't go around telling people. <laughs> it's like, isn't, wouldn't that be arrogant? <laughs> so it's funny to watch their reaction. And I'm like, and I said, okay, now you've known me for three years and you see, I'm just a regular guy. You know, I'm just a regular guy. And, uh, you know, those are things I did and I loved doing them and had some great success doing them, had some great failures doing them, epic failures. Um, but more importantly, um, turned it around and made something out of a huge adversity that will crush a lot of people. And a lot of those people um, will crawl into a cave and stay low key and just fade away. And that just wasn't the way I was wired. I was like, you know what, I screwed up. I need to make this right, not just you know, not just for the athlete and for all the things I did to embarrass the athlete and the NFL and the Green Bay Packers and my family and that whole stereotype, but just, you know, to make things right for me and to slay some of those demons and, and stuff that I had. And I did that in Indy. You know, I did it and I did it sober and I never took a painkiller in three years and, and all that stuff. And it's just, you know, it's, uh, it's much easier to play against Reggie White sober than it is drunk or, or, or half, you know, 40 <laughs> painkillers in you. Um, although it's still difficult to play against them when you're sober. And, and you know, he was, he was a, the total package on and off the field.
and you know it, it crushed me when he passed away and um but i played against him uh twice and and it was two times too many <laughs> thanks for coming in my pleasure thanks for having me